Oh boy, here we go. The ninth game in the Tony Hawk series, Tony Hawk's Proving Ground, was released in 2007 to mixed reviews. The game used the same engine as Project 8 and tried to build on what they'd made in the previous game. Project 8 lacked a real story, and so Proving Grounds went hell for leather and included 9, and more if you want to count them as stories. However, I'm afraid to say that this game frustrated me beyond belief. I recently finished my first ever playthrough of the game on the PlayStation 3, and here's my late review on Tony Hawk's Proving Ground. The game was set in Philadelphia and included three main focuses. My skater was able to be free in the open world and I could choose the paths that I wanted to take. After a brief introduction by Tony Hawk, I'm then given the chance to choose between career, hardcore and rigor. Korea would see my character work on video parts and photos, utilising the nail a trick that was introduced in Project 8. Nail a grab and nail a manual were also added to add some variety. This was probably my favourite journey of the three, but every mission was either get points or nail a trick and get points. This became very repetitive and I eventually got a bit bored of constantly going into slow-mo and randomly flipping and grabbing the board in every direction imaginable. Hardcore was next, and this included Mike V, who taught me how to push on a skateboard with R1. This allowed me to get crazy speed, do huge jumps and clear huge gaps. I'm going to be honest, this was also frustrating. I'd often either miss the timing for the pushes, or Ollie in the game wouldn't register it so I'd only jump a metre or two. The story took me to the famous skate park FDR, where I eventually got into a fight with a mysterious fellow called Cam and spent the next 10 minutes whacking him until he left me alone. Rigor was the final mode and was basically the skate park creator in the real world. This was by far my least favourite mode as it was the same thing over and over again. Place a ramp, place a rail, place a ramp, place a rail, collect something. The rails often wouldn't connect to each other properly and the quarter pipes, well, let me talk about them after this short message. Are you enjoying this video? If so, please like it and subscribe to the channel. It would really mean a lot. Anyway, back to the video. The gameplay was somewhat okay. It played the same as Project 8, but they didn't improve the jankiness. However, this game seemed to play even worse. I'd often bail at random moments and my character would be sent into never-ending slides, going 50 miles an hour along the floor. And the quarter pipes, my god. I'd be in the middle of a 100,000 point combo using quarters and reverts, Eventually, I'd go to land the combo on the quarter and my player would miss the curve of the ramp and land on the floor. There was no way to know that this was going to happen, and it happened way more than once. The game felt broken and this added to the overall frustration. Especially when I'd be in the third part of a mission, press start and restart the level, and instead of taking me back to the checkpoint, it took me right back to the very beginning of the mission. Other changes in Proving Ground included the grind and manual balance meters. I don't understand the need for this change, and it wasn't a welcome one. After around 10 hours of playtime, I was still unable to properly see my balance meters, with them now being shown by big semi-transparent lines across the entire screen. This made turning corners while grinding almost impossible, and I couldn't see which way to lean without being confused by the balance meter. Bowls, on the other hand, were greatly improved. I could now carve around bowls properly with the touch of a button and do slash grinds which automatically lead me back into the bowl when my speed ran low. I loved these missions, although the use of cutscenes after every single carve was very annoying. There were some good things in Proving Ground, but unfortunately the bad far outweighed the good. The navigation arrow showed you where the next mission was, but by the way the crow flies. Often I'd follow the arrow to a dead end and have to use the map to find the actual way there. Animations were still janky, and my character no longer bent down when holding the X button. This often made me doubt if the game had registered that I was holding it, so I'd release X to press it again, but end up ollieing and losing all of my super push speed. There was no quick travel, and I could now land tricks at 90 degrees and carry on skating sideways. There was no incentive to complete any of the side missions, or the main missions at the hardest difficulty. Just like Project 8, there were easy, medium and hard versions of every goal, but I could just complete the easy one and blast through the game. This meant that I'd come third in all the competitions, but still somehow beat whoever my rival was. There were also several occasions where the subtitles were completely different to the words actually said by the characters. 
I do have to give praise for the use of NPCs though. It was nice to see the return of Eric Sparrow from Underground 1 and 2, along with Arto Sari, Bob Burnquist, Mike V and loads of other real skaters. The original pro skater roster is long gone, but I've finally come to terms with it and I can get on board with the new skaters. Tony Hawk's Proving Ground was rightfully the last proper Tony Hawk game for years to come, and it was probably the right decision. The game was fun to play in the open world and the level design was actually fantastic. It felt good finding realistic spots and using the camera function to take cool photos of tricks and grinds, but this was really the only positive to the game. It lacked a free skate mode and the main menu was painfully bare, only showing single player, multiplayer and online. I honestly just didn't enjoy the game and it was a sad ending for the franchise which wouldn't be revived with a proper handheld controlled game for many years. This game being Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, another game I've never played, but I'm sure it's going to be a good one. <clears throat> anyway, we'll just have to wait and see. So thank you for watching this late review of Tony Hawk's Proving Ground. Please don't hate me, but I pride myself on being as honest as possible, and this game just didn't do it for me. I was happy when I finished it, and I'll be happy not to go back to it. If you've enjoyed this video, why don't you check out the rest of the late reviews that I've done on Tony Hawk games here. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.